this is tripping me out with this like this. Hold on, I gotta try to see if I can see myself not paused. <laughs> That's cool. You're uh, okay. you have a very colorful uh, art, right? I do. That's I'm nice. Probably... Yeah. Yes. Nice. I like the energy and colors. I'm a bit distracted because I'm switching off my phone just to make sure that no one is calling. Yeah. Do you know this feeling in life? I mean, we haven't started yet, but um, uh, life is like a collection of things that you're you're doing, and um, uh, that sometimes suddenly something is there, right? I remember we were speaking, and uh, now it's like it suddenly it's there. <laughs> uh, but you all, I'm now in Costa Rica. Yesterday I went to ecstatic dance, so sometimes it's like things are coming in between. Nice. <laughs> Love it. Yes. Yeah, I think. <laughs> been uh like pittsburgh cleveland orlando since we talked yeah, last yeah. Uh, ah, that's, that's really cool yeah. yeah so just a practical question um because officially we've scheduled like an hour but like uh, do we have time after or are you like you have a meeting afterwards or he just has to paint so whenever yeah, we're done we're yeah. done yeah yeah okay okay that's good what we can experiment is let's say do a three minute silence so we can all let's say land in the space okay and uh, get rid of anything that is maybe still in our minds or i don't know what you guys been doing today and then we can start is that a is that a plan i'm good with it it's good yes okay. well, i'll take a deep breath and then we can close our eyes <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. I think uh, these those were the three minutes. <laughs> Always yeah. not, nice to uh, to land a little bit. <laughs> Before we start, how can I introduce you? Are you the creators of Art of Adventures, the founders, the leaders, the travelers? What are you? Yes, all of the above. <laughs> all of the above. <laughs> yes, yeah. we created it. We we do the traveling. We do the video making. Okay. We are Art of Adventure. Yeah. Everything. And then Mo, you are an artist. And then Pascal, uh, can I say, let's say, former 
media person or, or how do you think journalist uh, journalist right yes emmy award-winning journalist there it okay. is that's good how many Emmys are there in, in the US? Is it like a national thing or a local thing or both? There are regions. And so they are five regional Emmys. Ah, I see, I see. So I will, uh, okay, I'll figure something out. And you're based in Florida, right? Yes. Okay, let's start. Enjoy, I think it will be wonderful. I like the colors there. <laughs> I'm in, uh, in a kind of a new room where I'm staying for two weeks. It's, it's funny, uh, we're here like birds chirping and you're from your end and our end we have like big dogs barking <laughs> i'm living in a community for two weeks it's very nice so yesterday we had ecstatic dance we eat together it's really nice That's very pretty cool. cool yeah all right so welcome friends to a new episode of the soul kitchen Thank i'm talking too. uh to mm. mo and pascal today who are the creators of the art of adventure and um some of their passions are coming together in this project it seems because mo is an artist um maybe that's why they've chosen the word the art of adventure and pascal is a journalist an emmy award-winning uh, journalist and um i met them through a mutual uh connection i met michael during the earth charter uh, my work for the earth charter and uh, yeah that's how we got to know uh, each other and today we're going to talk about the art of adventure around following your passions around life transitions and all maybe some other things so very excited to uh, to meet you today and my first question is how do you feel right now and what's your intention for this conversation feel good feel good yeah i don't know what my intentions are i'm i'm going into it without uh with an open mind and exciting for i'm just excited to see what happens here yeah okay. i think it's exciting to yeah. get art of adventure out there and get people talking about it and understand you know there's there are adventures everyone can can tap into that are very close to their own backyard sure yeah. i'm really excited because uh, i also consider myself an adventurous person and it has brought meaning uh, to my life uh, which is not not always easy to understand why it brings so much uh, meaning but please tell me what is the art of adventure and why did you decide to start this uh, this project or this adventure art of adventure is about um exploring about adventuring about traveling to see new places and we think there's an art to it because you know, you, you have to be able to pivot you have to be able to move and shake when things don't go right you have to be able to handle the unexpected. Absolutely. And we think that that's part of the art as well as the beauty of the places that you're going to see. Yeah. So you mentioned the word art and you mentioned the word uh, pivot, adapting. So what is actually your definition of art? Baby? Art? Uh, art, art is anything you can get away with. <laughs> um, it's just expression. Uh, <laughs> it's expression. <laughs> It's expression, yeah. yeah. And, and the word, the word pivot, it means change, adaption. Is that part of expression of art? Yeah, Absolutely. I yeah. think so. You know, I mean, part of it is, um, you know, when we go into an adventure, like we do a limited amount of research, like we have an idea what we want to get into yeah. or ways that we might be able to pull it off. But personally, I think one of the most fun things is when it doesn't quite work out right. <laughs> And so we have to figure out like kind of that plan B, plan or, plan B or plan C. C. I think um, my um, history as being a, you know, a journalist, being a producer, working in news media, you always had to have plan B. You always had to be able to pivot because the show goes live, we rarely... whether you have what you need or not. And so I think that that's kind of helped us stay creative oh, sure. and be able to pivot when needed. Absolutely. We never we hardly ever book hotels in advance. No. no. And uh, can you go up in a uh, city and that's when we start looking for, for where yeah. we're going to stay. Yeah. And you share your um, adventures on your YouTube channel. And I think how I see your project has two sides. One, of course, you do it for yourself because you probably enjoy it. And then two, you probably also have a message for people or you want to achieve something. Uh, if we look at the second part, like what's 
what do you want to achieve or why do you share your adventures with other people we want our experiences to help other people have amazing adventures right <laughs> and so the things that we learn along the way we like to sort of be a teacher or a coach or a mentor in that way because our experiences can really help someone's adventure be epic and we get a lot of great comments to that effect on our youtube page you know people saying oh i've been like costa rica for example someone wrote the other day that they've been planning their trip for a year they've been looking at youtube videos for a year on how to plan the perfect costa rica trip and when she watched our video she was like home run this is the one this is the one I, you guys crushed it this was the best video most informative and what's cool is like we're just experiencing it we're going out we're having a good time and you know we've got a camera rolling and so at the end we want to put it together so there's value to the person who's watching it yeah we eliminate all the mistakes and you know we go through the stuff you don't want to do but we tell them about we that them too about yeah yeah yeah, yeah, like, oh, whatever you do, don't go here. Yeah, don't, or, go, don't, don't go here. Or yeah. wear tennis shoes, not flip flops. Absolutely. You know, all the little right. things that people want to know. And what has been your the most uh, popular YouTube uh, video? We have a video that just passed 40,000 views, which is pretty good for a channel that's only been a year and a half old. Yeah. And it's on the top free video, I mean, top free springs in the state of Florida. So we narrowed it down to a few springs that are 100% free. They're like county springs, um, but they're they're beautiful. I mean, there's a lot of free springs in the state, but we wanted to find the ones that were like worth the drive. You can swim there. You can snorkel. You can jump on a raft. You, you, don't, have be, you don't have to be rich to do these things. No, and that's we don't, like, we're not rich. We that, don't have a lot. We don't have money. That, oh. that's the thing about a lot of the videos yeah, is things you do. what can you do on a budget right. like sure costa rica yeah that's going to cost right, something right, right. sure going to egypt that's going to cost right. something but we want to show people that i mean there are springs right here in their backyard that are beautiful that you may even catch solo and have an amazing time and it it's free entrance or maybe three dollars six dollars to get into some of these springs so the top free springs is one of our top viewed videos so far Oh, so one, of, one of the messages that you want to convey is that you don't need to be very wealthy to go on an adventure exactly. absolutely yeah, a lot of these are right in our backyard right here yeah a lot of That's things we should just go it's, on. A, it's a misconception right or it's an obstacle for people that maybe they think that their dreams are costly absolutely absolutely yeah. yeah regular regular folk can go on and have a good time yeah one of the videos <laughs> we're working on this week for instance are uh kayaking in northeast florida and all of the free boat ramps the best boat ramps that you could put in for free to have a good kayak and i mean there are a ton of free adventures yeah. right right in our backyard yeah. mm. that's true so what i also like is uh maybe in typical traditional thinking or maybe it's my own limitations of my mind is that adventures are for young people you know when you're 18 after high school or let's say after you finish your college you go on a gap year and you travel um i'm not sure how old you are but i think you're you're beyond the uh, age we're not of 18 anymore no <laughs> I, I didn't get to travel when i was 18 or, or yeah. Yeah, i'm traveling more now than i ever have in my life yeah know. so that's what i what i like about your case example where you're kind of like um an antidote to that thinking that you can only do that when you're young so how is that for you to do it in this this phase of your life what does that mean to you yeah i mean we're kind of big believers that m minutes are worth more than money and and making sure like every day counts you know every minute that you know we love planning for adventures we love going on adventures if we don't have something planned we start to get a little yeah. a little antsy i'm getting a little antsy right now i need, we, to, be, I need <laughs> to be out of country we love seeing things from new perspectives and to me that's timeless yeah. that's you don't need an age and in fact you know some of the exploring i did as an 18 year old i wish i had the knowledge i have now then i you know i enjoyed those adventures don't get me wrong but i may have taken a little bit more from them at the time you appreciate things as you get a little older you know yeah, so yeah. smell the roses all you have is time. And, Today yeah. is the youngest you'll be for the rest of your That's life. Right. Take yeah. advantage. So when you're older, you're more appreciative of the, the, the time you have. Yeah. And tell me a bit more about your 
life beyond your adventure. So you are an artist, uh, Mo. Like what? Yes. What type of art do you create, or what? Tell tell me more about it. I do graphic art. Um, my art is um, energetic, colorful. You know, I'm from Pittsburgh, so I grew up in a gray town. You know, gray weather. Um, so I I paint with a pretty vivid palette. But uh, it's that, all about energy. The and, elephant you see there, based on the Franz Lansing photo um, yes. in Africa, is, is, is one of his. I see. It's a beautiful painting, very colorful. And earlier in this conversation, you said art is what you can get away with. Yeah. But what is the meaning of that in your life? Me? Well, <clears throat> it's always been my superpower, you know, since I've been a, a child. Like I, I, I had a gift to communicate you know, through my art and uh, I'm, I appreciate the ability to do that. I appreciate the opportunity to do that. So I'm trying to make sure that I make something worthwhile, you know, leave something for my kiddos, you know, so and, and inspire other artists. I'm always inspired by other artists. So hopefully yeah. I'm inspiring other artists as well. And can you mention one artist that has inspired you and why? Man, I mean, I like Kandinsky. I, I like, uh, I see some, Le some Leroy Neiman. I, I got a little Leroy Neiman. Like I had a Leroy Neiman painting in my house when I was young. And I always loved the style of throwing paint and, and just barely make out what, what's happening, but you know what's happening. So um, I think those are some big ones. And when you're inspired by those artists, is it because the things they produce or is it because the lives they have lived or both? I think it's more of the things they produce. Like, you know, I go into... Uh, I don't know much about the artist when I see the art, and then I find out more about the artist, you know. And it's it's weird how certain pieces can move you, but they're so different from the artist, you know. Because artists yes. have stages and in, in different periods, and it's it's weird to see one painting from the same artist. There's another painting, but a completely different. You would think another artist painted that piece, you know. So it's weird. So. It's weird to see that where an artist is in life by his paintings. Yeah. We're so big art collectors too. Like we love, love being art. moved by art, going to art shows. When we go to some of these towns and places, we like to see art or we might get like a small piece from, you know, a local artist on the street. Um, it's just really cool to be affected by art on any continent, um, on any part of the earth. It just, it says something to you. You can't always talk through words, but you can always talk through art. Can't live without it. I was at a at a festival in Costa Rica recently. It's called the Envision Festival, and there were many artists there as well. Envision. What I like about artists is that, uh, let's say, business people are really focused on certain productivity or efficiency, whereas for artists, something doesn't necessarily need to be functional, right? It can maybe be beautiful or it can be an expression. Um, but is that true for you as well, or? Yes, I, I I write somewhere in my paintings. Mostly, most of the paintings, real small. Sometimes it doesn't need to make sense. Ah, it doesn't need to make sense. <laughs> Just remind yeah. us, it doesn't need to make sense. So it doesn't need to, no. need to make sense. I think that's what we can learn from from artists, right? That not everything needs to make make sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you bring your artist background to the project, and Pascal, you you've been a journalist. Um, what have been some of the highlights of your life as a journalist? I think storytelling, you know, giving a voice to the voiceless, um, getting stories heard that may otherwise uh, not be heard that are, you know, important stories. And that um, the art of storytelling has really a big part of what we do now. You know, yeah, we might have some videos that are a lot of facts and pro tips and here's some info that you need. But if you're really paying attention, 99% um, of the videos we do have a story. They have a beginning, a middle, and end. And stories are about people, not things. So it's it's fun to go and embrace a culture and embrace the people of the places that we go because that's really where the story starts and ends. Yeah. And what has been your most, uh, the work that you've been most proud of? Uh, or, or what type of work brought you those Emmy, uh, Emmy Awards? Um, you know, I, one of the, one of the stories that stands out, cause unfortunately there's a lot of crime and grime and doom and gloom and, and storytelling and, and, um, telling important stories. But one of the stories that I'm most proud of 
that um, no one died <laughs> was we had a plane that came into a runway to, um, it was, came into the wrong runway and ended up in the river off one of the Navy bases, but it was a commuter, commuter plane and it landed in the water. And just the act of getting all of the people in the right places at the right time to tell the story. And there's so many logistics involved. You know, you put choppers in the air to show what's going on. I'm putting reporters on boats to get out closest to, to the plane. And, you know, and, and, and the biggest question are, how did this happen? Why did this happen? Because clearly there were mistakes made and to make sure that mistakes like that don't happen again. So there's a big safety part in the storytelling and investigation that we did into that plane. So um, there were a lot of issues with it, but I think that in the end, I was very proud of the way our station uh, came together and really investigated that, that accident. And I'm, I'm happy that no one died in that accident because it could have gone very differently had rescue been farther away and things like that. I mean, the plane was sinking. So um, kind, kind of a, a, a weird story, but one where I was very proud of the whole team and how we handled it. Mm. And how do you create such stories? Because uh, you collaborate with other people. How does a team look like when you create such a story? Yeah, well, at the time I was running a newsroom here locally in Jacksonville. And so we're a team of uh, 90 people. And it happened very late on a Friday night. And so a lot of that was coordinating, just getting people in the right place, getting your reporters in the right place, getting your producers on TV and staying on TV. I think we were on TV until like two or three in the morning, um, if not later, um, and then back on at like, you know, a couple hours later. So it it's um, there's a lot of stamina involved. You know, my reporter slept about maybe an hour in his car. My reporter and photographer closest to the scene slept in their car. Um, right there in the parking lot and got up in an hour and, and got back on TV. So it's, it's. They become part of the story. <clears throat> you I know, mean, they're, they're living it too. Like they're, they're, they're going through it with, with the people who are, are living the drama. Uh, I can imagine it's very, you need to be very flexible, right? Cause you, you, you hear about it and you have to act immediately. Yes. So it, it's a, it's a very high energy, <laughs> um, high stress at times job. Um, but like I said, you know, stories like that where, you know, no one died and now let's just figure out what went wrong and how to avoid it in the future became our, our biggest um, story. For the art of adventure, is it more like you go on an adventure and you see what's happening? Or are you kind of conscientious about the stories that you want to create? Kind of you plan them ahead or you think about what will resonate with your tribe? It's a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an idea. It's usually something we want to do, first of all, because <laughs> I, I feel like if we want to do it, um, other people will want to do it. Um, it's one of those things where people have told us for years that they live vicariously through us, right? If we post a couple pictures on social media from whatever adventure we're on, they're like, man, we, we live through you guys. Keep it up, you know? And so we started saying, huh, we can tell stories. We love adventuring. Maybe we could tell stories to help people adventure more right. and get out into nature more. And um, so a little bit is, okay, well, what do we want to do? And then we might, you know, logistically look around. Like, he's a big baseball fan. Okay, there's. let's say that the Pirates are playing in Bradenton this weekend. Okay, what do we want to do in Bradenton this weekend, you know? And we start kind of looking at it like that. And then before you know it, we sort of have a plan, a, a basic outline for the weekend and we go for it. We start shooting. But I mm. certainly don't go into a story like I've known people who who literally have written a script and then they go shoot the story. And I that is just no, I can't work yeah. like that because I don't want to do that. I want to experience the story authentically. Yeah. And then tell the story of kind of what went down, what we learned. I don't want to ever feel like work. <laughs> no, no, no. It should not, not be too scripted. That's yeah, I can't. Doing. We can't be scripted. No, no. no. I, I agree. Like with this podcast, uh, in the beginning, I prepared a few questions, but nowadays I don't have any questions, for instance, right now, uh, or I don't make notes in my notebook. So it's more spontaneous. Yes. Um, another thing I'm curious about is are you aware of the concept of the hero's journey by Joseph Campbell? No. No. So, 
he's a mythologist that studied a lot of heroes in the past in mythological stories and kind of the journey they went through. And it's um, he found out there's a standardized process. So it starts with a call to adventure. So in your previous lives, at some point, maybe you felt the call to start this art of adventure. Then, of course, there's a few doubts, a few fears. You know, you don't know exactly how to do it. But then at some point, there's a point he calls it crossing the threshold. So you decide to commit. Maybe you you create the logo or you create the YouTube channel uh, or you share with your neighbors and your family that you're going to do it. And then once you cross the threshold, suddenly people come your way that help you. Maybe you meet people with, that have YouTube channels. Maybe someone like me starts to interview you. So what have been kind of things that have entered your life because you made the decision to start this project? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, no, I think the biggest, I mean, we'll back up to like the doubt part first. So, uh, you know, to so do, you quit, do, you, do you recognize a bit the early steps I mentioned? Yes, yes. <laughs> so, so we'll go to that part. Um, <laughs> I think the the scariest thing was um, leaving a job. You know, I had a 20 year career in news media and, you know, it's not like anyone gets into news media to make a lot of money, but at some point you're in a position where you're pretty comfortable and I was there. And so to walk away from that on a kind of a, a whim, a hunch, a, a feeling that there was more to do, or we could use the storytelling and the art to tell different kinds of stories, the kinds of, of adventures we want to do. We wanted to create value for people in a different way than turning on the six o'clock news every night. Not that anything's wrong with that. Watch the news. But I'm just saying we wanted to, I don't know, it was a very tough decision to walk away from that because in many ways that was my dream job to grow as a journalist in this market and become news director. So to walk away with it was a very scary thing. Everybody needed a challenge. The, the monotony of just putting out fires and not doing passion projects was eating at her. I, I saw as an artist who watched her work in the corporate world. So man, mm -hmm. need to, it's like bringing her into the matrix. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, need, I need to take the blue pill. <laughs> Come join me. In this other world, it's a whole other world over here. So you invited Pascal kind of to join the, this world. It's you know, I've never really made a lot of money. <laughs> People think I have money because I don't look broke. You don't look broke. <laughs> I don't act broke, <laughs> but you know, I mean, at the end of the day, I can make money. You know, on a blank piece of paper. So I've always had that knowledge, yeah. and and you know, and, you know, if it ever gets bad, that bad, I just make you know just keep painting he could go on any painting. street corner in any city in america yeah. with two white canvases and a and a bag of paint and, and walk away with money at the end of the day yeah. superpower. that that's is a superpower cool. <laughs> that's cool so mo you've been an artist and uh you you were already more used to this type of lifestyle where financially it's more uh, unstable and maybe not unsecure but more unstable and for you you had to make the switch from this newsroom um uh, director role or, or manager or journalist to this so what was kind of the uh the point where you decided because there's always one specific point where you say yes can you specify a bit the, this, when you made the decision and how it was for you yes um well i had just finished um my third year as news director and contracts kind of work in that like a three-year cycle a lot of times and I really got a now or never feeling, you know, as a 47 year old who, um, you know, you, you just look at the opportunity and the window. And I was like, if I don't do it now, I never will. And I'm not the person who wants to be sitting around in 20 years asking what if, what if we got to adventure? What if we got to share our experiences? What if that helped people get closer to nature and 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 in the long run, you know, help the sustainability of the earth? You know, like what if we didn't do those things? And that would have just eaten at me. So I think it was the 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 timing and a little bit of, you know, you get a little bit of a headache doing day-to-day -day stuff. And I was just like, now or never. And that was a big factor.
Mm. So it was the, the, the now or never feeling. Mm -hmm. And uh, how did your um, uh, previous environment, I mean, I'm sure you're still maybe in touch with the, some of those people, but how, how were the responses of, let's say, your environment before you entered this new world? It's funny. You know how you expect pushback from people? Almost. I would like say, I would say like 95% <laughs> of people were like, she was a man. Yes, Pascal, do it. Go all the way. My friends were like, absolutely do it. My coworkers were like, oh my God. I, you kept I, waiting for someone to talk you out of it. Yeah. And no one ever talked <laughs> me out of it. You get a job. Go back to work. I saw <laughs> one of my former coworkers uh, over the weekend. We had a golf tournament in town and he like we were chatting and he stopped about halfway through and he says, Pascal, I've never seen you smile so much. And, yeah. I mean, you know, like that to me, and, and, and awesome. especially when you don't even know that, you know, you're just having a conversation and they stop you to say, oh, my God, I love to see you smile this much. That just kind of yeah. tells me I, I did the right thing. Yeah that's beautiful so it's funny right so you ex expected some pushback but then people actually really uh, encourage yeah. you yeah but that's part of fears right you expect pushback but at the end uh most people think more about themselves than about you right so they're they're probably <laughs> yeah. happy for you okay so that was the doubt or the fear part mo did you have any doubts or fears or you basically didn't have them because you already lived like an artist for you but it wasn't a big deal I was very excited. I, I, you know, I, I'm trying to talk her off the ledge. That, oh, okay. You know, when I'm you, like, you make, I can't believe I'm doing this. You make money for other people. We can always make, you know, make money to survive. So if you do something we're good at and, and do it passionately, we'll get paid. I, that's yeah. my belief. If you do something you're good at and you do it well, you're going to get paid to do it. So we love to travel. We should travel. We travel well. So eventually we're going to get paid more to do it. We yeah, already paid a little bit. A little, I mean, a little bit. Because <laughs> it's easy to see from the outside, you know, your your combination of, of of journalism, media, art, and then adventure. It's not like you're doing something that is completely outside your area yeah. of strength, right? It's not like suddenly you you became a baker or like yeah, uh, right. <laughs> yeah, these are one hundred percent our strengths. Yeah. yeah. So, and yeah. for us, it's never been about making a lot of money either. Like. Sure, we want to, you know, make sure our bills are paid and that we've got enough to travel and explore. Um, but it wasn't like we thought we we're going to start a YouTube channel and get rich. It's just it's do just, what you're passionate yeah. about. Like, you know, if you don't do that, you're you're always going to think, what if? What if? And I can't leave this earth thinking that. So I, I need we need to figure out this, you know, yeah. let, let it ride, see what happens, you know. So in this hero's journey, the, the doubts and fears part we kind of covered now. So now I'm I'm still interested in what types of people, projects, or unexpected encounters came into your life because you crossed the threshold and entered this new world. You know, one of the things that I had no idea I had the ability to do. It it's so interesting. I've been designing logos for companies. Who knew I could do that? I I've been I've that. been designing like like welcome letters for companies, letterhead for companies. Yeah. I've been doing um I call them hype videos, but they're um basically videos that celebrate relationships between things. So I've been doing that for companies and realizing I'm I'm using my passions and my love for um visuals and storytelling. A good storytelling. And so I can do that for companies who never even realized they needed that. I'll give it an example. So one of the local mountain biking organizations, Sorba Jacks, uh, they were celebrating a 10 year relationship with REI, you know, the outdoor equipment company. Mm -hmm. And um, they were like, you know, Pascal, could you put together like a 10 year anniversary kind of celebrating the relationship video? And I think they thought they were going to get like a PowerPoint, like in, you know, in 2008, we got this much money for this project. And no, I did a story about getting kids on bikes. You know, I found a common ground and celebrated the future of the sport and the future of the company um, more than looking at the last 10 years. And I had um, this one. This, the president of Sorba said, you just made a grown man cry. Like, and that's, that's the storytelling that I think can help lots of companies in business. 
And um, that's something I never, never would have thought of that I even could do, you know. Um, so that was a really exciting kind of side effect of, of what we've been doing, the side hustle, if you will. That's beautiful. So if you can make a grown man cry, you know you've touched someone's heart, right? That's beautiful. And so side hustles came uh, uh, came to you. And for you, Mo, like what kind of unexpected things or people came into your life? I just enjoy meeting new new people, new cultures, you know, seeing new art. Um, it's the textures for me. You know, I, the smells, the... I'm a little different, you know. I, I sit in the back of the bus and I take everything in, and I'm, I'll talk about the whole the whole trip to a resort. You know, oh my God, look at the size of those trees. And look at the oh man, look how the mountains, the light is hitting the mountain. People say, "Shut up!" Mom. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> I see the art in everything, and then you meet wonderful people and new cultures, and that to me is what it's all about. Like I, I love, I live for traveling, getting lost, not not knowing how to communicate, but you can always communicate. There's always a, le a level of communication, you know, but yeah. We went to Egypt last year with total strangers, total strangers. And we had, um, we had a fantastic time over there. You know, we saw, you know, the, the, the oldest pyramid on earth. We saw the, the great pyramid. We scuba dived the Red Sea, you know, we four wheeled in the desert and rode camels and, you know, mm -hmm. experienced all the things you experienced. But one of the coolest parts about that whole trip is we are still today really good friends with about 10 of those people yeah. that we were on that trip with we that we live, never we even knew before. Like so we, away. we've yeah. even, we've done trips where we've met places. Like we were in the panhandle a few weeks back on a scuba dive trip with a group that we had met in Egypt. We did a, an, a previous boat nice trip friends. with a group that we met from Egypt. We did another trip to the Springs, Springs with Springs. a group that we met. And, and they're not all the same people, yeah, you know? Different people come down and, and it's quite, it's quite, they understand the adventure, like what we had, what we went through, you know, I, what we saw with our eyeballs. I yeah. wouldn't have had, if I had had my same job, I wouldn't have had the two, or it would have been tough to get the two weeks off to do that trip that really has led us to some forever friends. So those are the things You've that- You've never been able to experience that like that. Yeah. Some uh, some new friends uh, from your, your travels. And have you also made some new connections in the world of YouTubing? Is that yeah. like a world in itself that you enter? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's comforting too, because when we meet some of these people on the road, um, a, most of the time they'll, they'll comment on our content that it's good content, which when you hear from another yeah, YouTuber, you need to hear stuff like, that. like, oh yeah. yeah. And also like when, when we're trying to, to check ourselves, like a year and a half in, you know, is 2000 plus subscribers, uh, uh, like, is that where we should be? Should we be farther along? Or, you know, one, one of the guys told me, he said, most people don't get over 400 subscribers ever. You know, mm. new channels are very, very hard to take off. Yeah, people usually quit. Yeah, they usually quit before they make it to the year mark. It's very hard. So it's exciting when you when you hear kind of feedback like that back from yeah, right people path. that you're looking up to, people who who kind of indirectly helped you. You know, we watched a lot of YouTube videos yeah. during COVID and really did kind of start to get that bug of, we can tell stories. Yeah, there's, we an can it. There's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an algorithm to it. There's a trick to it. But once you get, once you figure that uh, that magic sauce out, I mean, there is money to be made in in doing what you love to do. You know, it's yeah. that's the whole. I think it's about quality and talent, but it's also about just keeping sticking to it, right? Like I've been an entrepreneur now for ten years, and sometimes you gotta stick to it. <laughs> Yeah. At some point, results will come. Right. Yeah. And of course, you need to have talent too, but I think it's those two. So yeah. if someone is listening to this conversation and they maybe want to start a YouTube channel uh, for whatever reason, can you give a few recommendations uh, based on your own experiences for people that want to get started? Yeah, I would say number one, um, tell a story. I think it's that's one of the most important things. Tell a story that... Um, has a unique value to the viewer. And I think that, you know, there, there's lots of little things like, you know, your, your thumbnail has to be super clickable, has to be interesting. Uh, you, you may even want to think about your thumbnail before you think about your story. What would be a, a very clickable? And now the way- a, th a thumbnail, is that, let's say, the picture that I see? Yeah, that's the picture. Yeah. 
And so when you see it, it has to be attention grabbing enough. The words need to be attention grabbing enough. Um, but you have to deliver on the video. Um, one of the great things about YouTube is there are a lot of analytics that you can get um, just from your YouTube studio page. Um, working in news, we paid companies lots and lots of money for the kind of research that I can get in one click through YouTube. So it's very handy. You know, they'll let you know where there's a dip in your video. Where did you lose them? Did you get them past that 30 second mark? Because the first 30 seconds of a video is crucial or you could lose them. And once you lose them, you'll probably lose them forever because mm -hmm. they did not find any value in what you had to offer. Um, you want to give them little deep teases, you know, a little something that they stick around for in the end. So there's a little extra incentive to stick around. Um, and then for monetizing, um, you know, like about an eight, nine minute video seems to be a sweet spot for getting those two ads to roll, which is, mm -hmm. you know, helpful. So if you do really short videos, you might have a great retention rate. But if you do one uh, twice as long at eight minutes, nine minutes, your retention rate may go down a little bit, which is OK, but you still got those two roles. So that's more on on the monetizing side. But um, I think those would be kind of my top five, if you will, for things for new YouTubers. <laughs> that's that's great. And Mulder, you have something to add from your perspective? Make it pretty. <laughs> make it pretty. <laughs> Keep it simple. Make it pretty. Keep it simple. It's, it's not, yeah. Keep it simple. Yeah. Make it pretty. No, I like. I like that. You see why we work well together. I'm talking yeah. about retention rates, and he's like, "Keep it pretty." <laughs> yeah. Those are some good. Um, Give me some ice cream. Recommendations, especially also about uh, the thumbnail. You know, immediately you need to, to yeah. keep your attention. Creators can make the mistake, also like myself, that you have the attention of someone that they'll read everything, but they're busy, right? So immediately you need to show what you offer. Yes. Um, um I. With my new project, the, the podcast, I have to balance, you know, just enjoying it on the one hand. But on the other hand, of course, I'm excited. If people listen, listen. So I click at the data, I look at the data. Uh, but then you can also stress out about it. So how do you guys balance uh, pure joy and let's say performance, if, if you can code like that, in terms of viewers or, or, or ads or whatever? There's some times where, because I am a very project oriented person, mm -hmm. um, you know, I like to like shoot something and get it, get it edited, shoot something and get it edited. But sometimes we're on the road and we, you know, we might have to shoot four or five things. And the timing of everything is such that, you know what, I'm not going to be able to edit this right away. I'm going to have to wait. And so the, the manager in me is like, like, you know, doing all the timelines in my head and, oh my God, that means a week that we're not going to have something that we're published and that takes away from consistency. But I just, I'm like, wait, we're our own bosses. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. just, just do it when you're ready to do it. Okay. And, and, you know, when I, when I came back from Costa Rica and I had so much amazing video and it was very, very high resolution, like 5k plus resolution. And it was very hard to work with for that reason. And I remember talking to my mom, I was like, man, I feel like it's gonna take me forever to do this video. And she's just like, let it take as long as it needs to take. And mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, and so I think I've had to kind of like chill out a little bit and not think always of the algorithm or it's Thursday and my video is not ready to publish. So. That's kind of been, I guess, a takeaway for me. Yeah, because you're, you're pro project oriented, eh? so sometimes maybe you need to slow down a bit. And then, and Mo, how do you balance joy and, and let's say performance, if that's the right word? Um, I don't know if that. Uh, it's kind of one and the same for you. It's kind of one and the same for me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't have to, I don't really, I don't feel I have to balance anything. You know, I, He's it's been good. working for himself for so long on his own schedule. Yeah. I don't think he worries too much. About <laughs> yeah. it. No. So, so that's good. So for you, it's not a feeling of balance, but it's integrated. Um, and I have a specific question for you as an artist. Uh, do you set an alarm clock? Yes or no? Are you guys still there?
very much for the presentation this time. I hope that you can see it. Hi, how are you? Yeah, you have a good weekend? You have a good weekend? Oh, yeah. Yes, they did. Yeah. Every, my wife said the, on Facebook in the vision group, everybody has told me. Hey. Uh, hello. Yeah, hello. <laughs> no, there's no problem because it kept recording, so we can just remove this. Okay, perfect. Okay. So, um, yeah, so the question I have for you, uh, Mo, is. Uh, um, and I will explain why I want to know whether you set an alarm clock as an artist, because uh, if you read um, productivity books, you know, people say you need to be productive, set an alarm clock. But then I was at Burning Man and I had a, there was like an 80 year old man who was an entrepreneur and creator. And one of his pieces of life advice was like, never set an alarm clock because it limits your creativity. Yeah. So I want to know from you as an artist, do you set alarm clocks? I do not. <laughs> I do. Can, can you elaborate why i um well you know you, you can't rush the creative process it's just it's just what it is you know um if i'm not ready to paint something i shouldn't paint it and when i have pieces i'm doing commission work for other people i told the people know when it's ready you know it'll be ready don't put me on a deadline don't <laughs> please don't do that when it's ready it's gonna be awesome but it'll be ready when it's when it's when it's ready you know the painting has to be ready the yeah project has to be ready I, it has to be ready mentally yeah I, I just bring the project out i'm just a delivery boy it's already there but if it ain't ready to come out it ain't coming out so yeah, alarms don't work for me but i um i think it's an interesting point of view and uh, i really like that advice from the burning man person because in the education system or maybe in life you're you're kind of wired you know to set alarm clocks it's kind of professional so i worked in strategy consulting for two years so there i've also been educated a lot around efficiency which definitely is useful but i'm also a creator uh part of me um so i prefer not to set my alarm clock either um but i sometimes see it as a balance because one part of me is maybe efficient businessman one part is let's say creator um uh, but it, it's an interesting uh, uh thing uh, the alarm clock so maybe that brings us to the next topic because the soul kitchen is around recipes for life right so the listeners can learn from recipes and as a guest you can share your uh, your recipe um so what is your recipe uh for life so i wrote it down so i could say it correctly <laughs> or how we wanted to convey it okay so thing one and Okay, you're back. So <laughs> when I asked you about the recipe and you started answering, I, I, I didn't hear anything. So we okay. can maybe we can start there. So we'll start over. So thing one is curiosity. We think you have to be curious with the world around you, right? There are tons of things you don't know, you will never know, but that quest of wanting to learn um is, is a big motivator for us and we think that that is um, a great ingredient um acceptance we think is an important ingredient and what we mean by that is really embracing new cultures you know some people think like the their way is the only way and they're just sort of tolerating everything else 
that like is completely against everything. A lot of Americans, yeah, a lot of Americans. <laughs> like, <laughs> like we definitely don't ever want to be just the loud Americans on no. the plane, right? So it's really about accepting cultures, learning from cultures. So those things go uh, really hand in hand. Um, and then adaptability. And for this, this is really about when we were talking about the art of the pivot. Um, things go wrong all the time. I mean, when we were on Most that times. that Egypt trip, uh, there were some people who like, if they didn't know what was going on, it was like, they would raise holy hell. And it was just sort of like- just, They had a different trip than we had, I think. Yeah, it was, it was It's memorable. just about being able to pivot. And if that doesn't work, you move to something else. And um, I think that that is a skill that sometimes needs to be learned. It's easier to, to, to learn than it is just, oh, be adaptable. Um, but Open I think mindedness and pivotability, man. Sure. Get there, yeah. Sprinkle it. So curiosity, acceptance, and adaptability are our ingredients for life. Yeah. Curiosity, acceptance, and adaptability. I think that's uh that's a great set of ingredients. Mo, do you want to elaborate from your point of view a bit on those ingredients? <laughs> <laughs> those are those are our ingredients. We collaborated. Um, <laughs> oh, I know, I know, but just hearing your voice. Don't don't take yourself so seriously. You know, um, don't. I I hate acting like there is someone acting like they're the smartest person in the room. I like to be around the smarter people. You know, so I can learn some things. Um, I'm a nerd, so I like to touch things. I like to read things. If there's a plaque some on a wall. I'm that old guy. So, oh, look, a plaque. You know, that's uh -huh. it's definitely the look. It's a plaque guy. <laughs> I read. I read it. I need to know. You know. So I do have a quest for knowledge, and like I have so many questions, and like I mean, I love seeing new faces, new new people, you know, new cultures. Yeah. I think that's one of the, for that. the things that's fun about adventuring together is you know I get to shoot a video of Mo doing things a lot of times for the first time and a i find a lot of joy in that but b it's so fun like even what we were walking to you know the pacific ocean and he was like i think this is the first time i've touched the pacific ocean and i'm like oh, i'm gonna video it you know like i did get so excited and i think he does too seeing each other learn as we go and that's been part of kind of the the cute part of us shooting each other going through life and, and saw her trying videos. to get on a camel yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i grew up on horses and i almost got kicked off a camel and little things you know I, but little things like that are just fun and and they're memories that that will follow you forever getting lost in and alleys in paris it's kind of cool that we're documenting them now too yeah yeah i like your um uh your 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 recipe so curiosity adaptability and um i'm also curious because now you've taken this step uh and if you look back like did it increase your your happiness like did it bring what you were hoping for because you made a transformation like if you look back i think um I've, i was always we're always been happy people like i always kind of worked really hard and played really hard so it you know i'm i'm just as happy as i ever was but what I think I really enjoy is the flexibility of of having control over when we do whatever we do. Yeah. You know, it's not like I got to go put in a vacation request and, oh, someone else has off during that time. You can't, you know, that kind of thing. But if we want to do something, we just get up and go do it. We'll stay another week. We'll stay another week. Yeah. We went, to, we went to Bentonville, which is like a mountain biking capital of America. It's an amazing place. They've invested a ton of money in their trails the in, in Bentonville, Arkansas. And we originally went the first time. We've been there three times now. But the first time we went, which was just last summer, was um, five days that we had like rented an Airbnb. We stayed for three weeks. <laughs> We extended our trip like three or four different times because we could. She would have never been able to do, do that before. Oh, never. Yeah. So that that is part that brings a new joy, extra joy, extra happy. Flexibility is pretty close. Yeah. So it's really the flexibility that you can decide whatever you want to do uh, at any time. Well, that's a beautiful um, transformation that you've made. And um, I asked you to to bring let's say a travel object or like one piece so uh of your travel so what 
is kind of a piece that reflects the travels that you have made. You first. My favorite piece that I've had, this is my cartouche mm -hmm. that I had made in Cairo. It has my okay. hieroglyphics. And then in another city in Egypt, uh, on the Mediterranean, uh, on the on the coast, the Red Sea, Red sea uh, they did my name in Arabic in the back. So there was, this is like the most special thing to me. This is my cartouche. I'll wear it for the rest of my life. Wow, cool. I'm, and a, it was king. I'm a king. <laughs> He's a you, pharaoh, in case you, you didn't know. You created it in Egypt or you bought it in Egypt? No, they I, built it for him. They made it for me while we were in Egypt. Wow. Yeah. And what is the meaning of Egypt to you? Why is that such a special place? Egypt to me? Yeah. Man, it... Uh, wow. Uh, <laughs> it's having an idea. You see what passion can do at its ultimate... Like if you just like you know what screw it we're going to build those pyramids. <laughs> I know it doesn't make any sense to to, to bankrupt the, the country for this, but you know what? They're going to talk about us for eternity. We're going to live forever, and everything was made like that. The artwork was chiseled; it wasn't drawn. You know, it's it's, it's there forever to for you to touch. I touched five thousand year old art. What? <laughs> like it was on the walls of just like so much tombs passion. that you can go in. You you can touch the wow. art that's four thousand years old. It's, it's amazing. amazing. It's amazing they had that kind of. They had the 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 balls to do that. Like what what? <laughs> but it, it's just um. I felt special. Me personally, I spelled my name is Mubarak, so I spelled I felt special um, from the moment I got there. You know, they treated me like I was some sort of royalty. Oh wow. <laughs> Then look at your nose, you are Egyptian. <laughs> you know, I'm from Pittsburgh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you look Egyptian, maybe. Yeah, you look Egyptian. <laughs> but uh, it was awesome. Um, everyone was hustling and uh, colors, and I can only imagine it's been like that for millennia. Yeah. You know? The yeah. pyramid is a, is a great example, indeed, of people following their, their passion. Man, yeah, it made no sense. <laughs> I mean, you would get, you you know, you can't. It's, no one would do that anymore. Like, well, we need to break bankrupt the whole country just for these, uh, <laughs> you know, for these tombs. <laughs> for yeah. My headstone here. <laughs> what? But and uh, for you, and for you, Pascal, your favorite travel piece. One of the things that I absolutely adore is um, this ring I wear all the time. Mo bought it for me in Thailand, mm -hmm. and that it's just I have it every day. It reminds me of travel. It reminds me of Mo. It reminds me of just go and follow your passions. And um, I, you know, back in the day when I traveled, I used to collect jewelry at every country I went to, and then. <laughs> my car got stolen that had all the jewelry in it one day and i kind of like ruined it. i was like oh i'm not doing that again so i mainly have been collecting like like silly things like like this is sand from the oldest pyramid on earth you know and a rock from egypt or you know we might get a a, a volcano rock from a beach or a shell or something like that that's been more of our kind of country collection of late yeah and mm. and or a nice bottle of liquor from that country or <laughs> ah. something like that we always have to you know we'll leave with something we like did that bring some guaro back home <laughs> nice yeah. bottle of liquor you're, so you're still humans right this yeah. Might yeah. Take this. brought some guaro home from costa rica so. yeah <laughs> well thank you for for sharing that and maybe another question i have is around the matrix um i feel a little bit ashamed but i have to admit i, I haven't watched it yet but i want to <laughs> watch it because also in this project the matrix popped by a few times but you have this blue pill and this red pill and it symbolizes kind of two paths in life right yes so yes. maybe mo can you maybe share a bit this this part of the matrix and uh, maybe what it symbolizes also maybe related to your life and maybe what other people can learn from it well as far as the movie goes in and relaying that to our story um you know you have to you have to come back from you know, to the real world and, and, and where it's not, it's not pretty, it's not fake. It's, oh man, it's rough down here, but this is, you know, there's a, there's a whole, these real people. This is the actual truth back here. You can see it, you know? So they, if you got to hustle, you know, you, you're working for yourself. So there's no, there's no more business meetings for other people. Like sink or swim, it's us. Either we make it or we have to go do something else, but we have to survive on our storytelling abilities and, and, 
my visual storytelling abilities and we're going to keep traveling, keep meeting new people. You know, I can't yeah. stop doing this. So, so one pill, one pill, you're really on your own. That's it. Yeah. Which pill is it? The path on your own? I forget which one. <laughs> I forget which pill is which. <laughs> I don't know either. I'm with you. I never yeah. watched the movie. I forget which <laughs> pill it is. Get it mixed up. Uh, which pill it is. It's the opposite pill. The other one. The red one's red one. Blue. Okay. Maybe we can end the conversation. I mean, we're nearly ending, but the um, this stage when you have like this idea inside you, but you're still in the doubt phase, the fear phase uh like what is your recommendation then for people what to do at that stage or how to I make the decision again. hold on let's see if he comes back oh can you hear me can you hear me Hello? Okay. <laughs> I don't know if it's you or me, but uh, that know. doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um yeah, so when you have this vision inside of you that you're considering doing something, but you still have these fears or these doubts, do you have some recommendation for when you are in that moment, what to do? Is it like, do you need to walk in the forest? Do you need to journal? Like, what what do you do in that stage? It's funny. I, the, a long time ago, I don't even remember who told me this, but they were like, when you have a decision to make and you don't know what to do, go stand on a rock that you're pretty sure has never been stood on before and say your intentions out loud and i i've i've only done that once and that was like 20 years ago for my very first job and i went to the beach and i like sort of unearthed a little coral rock and i stood on it and i and i did that and i ended up taking a job in tv that was 20 years ago um, so, you know, you could do something like that, but I think in the end, it really is about a choice that makes you happy. What makes you happy? And is it good for other people at the end of the day? Is it good for the earth at the end of the day? And I think it, as long as you're kind of, it might sound cliche, but if you're following your heart and you're doing what makes you happy and it doesn't hurt anyone and it helps people and it helps the earth, I don't see how you can go wrong. Mm -hmm. I just don't see that's i never heard that advice before but i like it standing on the rock <laughs> i, I never heard that either <laughs> been together a long time i never heard that either <laughs> that's, that's a good to do it in a like, while. Man, that's pretty cool okay. that's a good thing of those podcasts that my guests sometimes tell stuff that they never knew they knew right about each other like, even what? On a rock. he's like what i didn't know you do that yeah <laughs> that's awesome well I think uh, we're nearly at the end of our conversation, but before we close it, is there anything else uh, that you would like to share uh, with the listener? Or or maybe an additional question, uh, if they want to engage with you, uh, I mean, what where can they find you, you know? So these are my two last questions. So Art of Adventure with Pascal and Mo yes. is our YouTube channel. So we invite your uh, viewers and listeners to connect with us there. Yes. We've got all of our social medias connected to our YouTube page. Our work is connected to the YouTube page. It's at Mobarga3 is my Instagram, um, but that's also connected to the Art of Adventure with Pascal and Mo. And I think yeah. really it is about asking everyone to just engage with our content. Yeah. If you subscribe, that helps us. Uh, it allows us to keep making these free videos for people. Yes. And we want to, that, that's the thing is we think accessibility is key and knowledge is key. And I don't want people to ever have to like 
pay for our content. I want it to be free so people can can help us in other ways. You know, you can sponsor videos, you can sponsor uh, the channel, you can buy our merchandise, you can subscribe, you can comment, like, and share our work. People can help keep the art adventure going. Yes. That's, that's cool. So um, if they want to follow you, please do it. And is there an opportunity in the future uh, to join you on a certain trip? Or do you have more in store uh, for people, like experience-wise? It's one of the things that we're looking on, specifically through our Patreon channel, is if there's an ability to do like a Patreon ride. Maybe we all hit the trails together yeah. one day, <clears throat> or maybe we all go to a spring together one day. Um, so it is certainly something that we're looking at um, how the, how we could manage it and how make it happen. Yeah, that sounds really, uh, really exciting. Well, thank you very much for your time today and sharing your, your stories. I enjoyed uh, listening to your, your transformation and also a bit the contrast that for Mo, who has been an artist uh, for, for his life, you know, it maybe wasn't so much of a difference, but for you, Pascal, it was more of a transition from, let's say, full-time journalist role managing 90 people uh, to this adventure. So that's cool also to see the, the, the contrast. So yeah, thank you very much for sharing your adventures and um, maybe we will meet in, in real life. You never know. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. This thank was awesome. you, Jasper. Yes. Uh, and thank you to everyone uh, for listening. We will see you uh, see you soon. Indeed. Thank you. Well, we're, we're done. <laughs> thank you so much. We made it. <laughs> we made it. The we computer it. only crashed <laughs> like three times. <laughs> I, think, I think it was very nice, uh, nice conversation. We touched upon uh, different things. Uh, how was it for you guys? It was very good. You made us feel very chill. Yeah, it's painless. I think mean, good questions. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, this was cool. What did you say, Mo? Famous? Oh, yeah. Huh? Did you say famous? No, did I? No. <laughs> um, uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> no, no, no. That was a Freudian thing. I, I wouldn't Maybe. mind. Yeah. I, you never know exactly what comes up, but I kind of, I like the, the, a bit the contrast of your backgrounds. And um, when you're in the full-time job world, I mean, I, I did it for two years, so for me, a short time. But there's this entire thing that, that everything outside is like a bit is scary, you know? Mm -hmm. But then for people that are artists, so my ex was an actress, and 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 that's how I know a bit that world. It's, yeah, if you've never been in the full time world, you, it's not even a thing. Yeah, <laughs> nothing is scary. You just paint, and then you have a good time, right? That's how he lives. <laughs> I'm the one, by the way, who sets like twelve alarms a day for things because oh! I just know when I need things done. Like, hey, yeah. can't forget this, or they're just little reminders. But that I, I had to do that in, in my work life, like when I was working, working, that, yeah. I mean, 20 alarms a day, easy, easy. Yeah. 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 That's, they, had that's, about, they had meetings about meetings. Uh, uh, it's funny. But it's funny um, that the, the no alarm clock, this guy at Burning Man is the first person that ever told me it very specifically, you know, don't set an alarm clock. And I'm trying to... Um, uh, keep my mornings free as much as possible. The only problem is because I'm from Europe. I have some business meetings with Europe and there's the big time difference. Yeah. But I'm kind of seeing the value of like not starting super early and like, uh, uh, sometimes yeah. you need to ease into your day. Yeah, unless you're, unless yeah. You're yeah. <laughs> then we get mad at Picasso like later, you know, when he figured, started figuring things out. Yeah. He would wake up late. It was man, you got things to do. Like, I, I'll do them when they when they get done, man. <laughs> I had to rest. I, had to, I wasn't ready. <laughs> well, so how we, how we will proceed? I have. I'm fortunate that I have a, a trainee in South Africa. Uh, I'm so I'm going to send this to him. He will listen. He will make the show notes. Okay. And I'll send it to you. Then you can give your feedback. We come up with a draft title. Uh, but for me, it's very important that you feel comfortable about, about the titles. If you want a different title, we can change it. Then uh, we will create um, uh, a soundbite for Instagram, and we will create a quote. Okay. So based on what you've said with your name, as if you're like uh, famous uh, people, like, hey, they said this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm sure so, we dropped some gems in there. <laughs> yeah. 
So those are pieces of content that we will share at Soul Kitchen. But you're also welcome to share it with your with, uh, in your channels. So that's basically it. And then exactly when I will publish it, I don't know, but we will take it um, step by step because there are two episodes before you. Okay. All right. Perfect. Will be published. Yeah, just that's let awesome. us know yeah, and if we can help in any way, holler. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you for this. And uh, yeah, maybe maybe we meet again. Yeah, thank sure. you, Jasper. Yes. I hope so. Okay. Appreciate you, man. Bye bye. Have a good bye. day. Thank you. Ciao. Ciao. Ciao.